Okay, it's Mr. Bison here, and I'm going to be doing every exam question that's ever been asked about probability. But I'm not going to do all of these questions because there's absolutely loads of them. I'm just going to start off doing the ones that are kind of from tables and one question about relative, uh, relative frequency. Then I'm going to be doing tree diagrams and then these two in some separate videos because there are loads of these questions. So like I always say, if you do want to use this document, it is linked in the description. So you'll recognise these ones from tables. They all seem to have a very similar pattern and we'll just see how they go. So we've got the probabilities that a biased dice will land on one, two, three, four, five, and six. And they say that they roll the dice 200 times. Work out an estimate for the total number of times the dice will land on a one or a three. So I think the first thing we need to do is find this missing probability. And we know that all of these probabilities here have got to add up to one. So on my calculator, I'm gonna do one minus 0 0.17 minus 0 0.18 minus 0 0.09, minus 0 0.15, minus 0 0.1, and that will give me the probability of it landing on a number one. So we'll do that very quickly. One minus 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.09, 0 0.15, and 0 0.1, and that gives us the answer of 0 0.31. So we now need to answer what the question says, and the question says, what is the probability, or sorry, work out an estimate for the number of times it will land on one or on three. So that means we're gonna be using this probability and this probability here. Now that probability will be them both added together. So that's 0 0.31 plus 0 0.18. Adding those together is going to be, don't need the calculator for that, 0 0.49. Now because they're rolling the dice 200 times, to work out how many times we think it will land on them, we do the probability multiplied by the number of trials or the number of things that are happening. So I just need to do 0 0.49 multiplied by 200, and we get the answer 98 for this one. So our prediction is that there would be 98 ones or threes. There's our answer 98, pretty straightforward question there. Okay, this one says that there are only blue, yellow, green, and red counters in a bag, and a counter is taken at random. The table shows the probabilities of getting a blue, yellow, or green, work out the probability of getting red. Well, all of these probabilities need to just add up to one. So I'm gonna do one minus 0 0.2, 0 0.35 and 0 0.4. And that gives me that red is therefore 0 0.05. It says, what is the least possible number of counters in the bag? You must give a reason for your answer. So it's a good idea to kind of think about what these are as fractions. That's usually the best way of doing this. If I change that from a fraction, I get that it's one over 20. So I can say that 0 0.05 is equal to one over 20. So I can say here, this means the minimum number is 20. This means, oh, sorry, yeah, the, the least possible number of counters is 20. This means the least possible is 20 counters. This is when there is only one red. This is where there's only one red. Because if the probability was, say, out of, I don't know, 35, then we'd need to have a minimum of 35 as well. And all of these could be written out of 20 as well. So we've got the 0 0.05, we've got the 20, and the reason that they explains each, each colour must be a whole number, or there must be at least one red counter, or even showing this particular thing here. Okay, we've got another set of counters in a bag. They are either red, white, blue, or yellow. The table shows all the probabilities that it will be blue or yellow. And it says this time there are 18 blue counters in the bag. The probability that the counter Bob will take red, sorry, the probability that the counter Bob takes will be red is twice the probability that the counter will be white. Work out the number of red counters in the bag. Well, first of all, we've said that red is going to be twice of white. So if white was x, red would be 2x. And so I think we can probably find out what those probabilities are going to be because we know that all of these need to add up to 1. So that would be 2x plus x plus 0.45 plus 0.25. All of that has got to be equal to 1. So that is 3x plus 0.45 plus 0.25. That's 0.7. So that means that 3x has got to be equal to 1 minus 0 0.7, which is 0 0.3. So x has got to be equal to 0 0.1. So I can go back to the table and say that must be 0 0.1, and that must therefore be 0 0.2. Now, we need to try and work out how many red counters there are in the bag, and they've told us this fact. They've told us that there are 18 blue counters in the bag. Well, that tells me something. That tells me that if I did 0 0.45 multiplied by the total, which I'm going to call y, so the y is the total number of counters, 
I know that if I did 0.45 times the total, I would get 18. So the total is 18 divided by 0.45. So let's work out what that is. 18 divided by 0.45, that means that there are 40 counters in total. So all I need to do now to try and find out how many red counters that there are going to be in the bag, I'm going to just do the probability of red, which is 0.2, and I'm going to multiply that by 40. I don't need the calculator to do that, but let's do it anyway. 0.2 multiplied by 40, and we get 8. So there are 8 red counters in the bag. It then says a marble is going to be taken at random from a box of marbles. The probability that the marble will be silver is 0.5. There must be an even number of marbles in the box. Explain why. So 0.5 means half are silver. Means half are silver. And you can only half an even number to get an integer. You can only half even numbers to get an integer or a whole number. And obviously you can't have, if you wanted to explain further, you can't have a half number of a marble. So we'll see that we got the correct answer eight here. Their explanation is 0 0.5 multiplied by an odd number will never be a whole number. For half a number to have to be an integer, that number must be even, you can't have half a marble. So I think we've definitely covered it with what we've written down here. Okay, this time again, we've got the same kind of setup, but it's a normal calculator. There are only blue, red, and yellow cubes in the box, and we've got the probabilities here. The number of red cubes is the same as the number of yellow cubes in the box. Complete the table. So if this would be an x and this would be an x, then I know that the x plus the x plus the 0.2 must be equal to 1. So 2x plus 0.2 must be equal to 1. You can see where this is going. 2x is going to be 0.8, which means that x must be 0.4. So if I want to complete the table, I can just put 0.4. Now, you could probably do this without even using algebra. You could say, okay, well, these things have got to be 0.8 because the whole thing needs to add to 1, so each one must be 0.4. Whichever way you want to go about it, though, is fine. It says that there are 12 blue cubes in the box. Work out the total number of cubes in the box. If I'm going to say that the total number of cubes in the box, I'm going to say that it's y. I know that if I did the probability of, of blue, which is 0.2, and I multiplied it by the total number, that I get the answer 12. So the total number is going to be 12 divided by 0 0.2. Now, 12 divided by 0 0.2, I usually write this as a fraction and think, OK, well, what can I do to the top and bottom? You could multiply the top and bottom by 5 straight away if that's something you know how to do. Um, or you might think, OK, I'll times this one by 10 so that it's out of 2. I'll times this one by 10 as well, so that's 120. And 120 divided by 2 is 60, which means that the total number of cubes in the box must be 60. So this is my working out for part B of the question, so I'll just kind of put it down there. So we're looking for 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 60. Yep, we've got those two things here and here. Okay, we've come back to a calculator paper. Again, it's just saying we've got counters in a bag. They're either green, blue, red, or yellow. The table shows the probabilities that a counter will be taken from the bag will be blue or green. And then here's the next part. It says the probability that a counter taken at random from the bag from the bag will be red is five times that it will be yellow. So if yellow was going to be x, then red would have to be 5x. It says that there are 300 counters in the bag. Work out the number of yellow counters in the bag. So first of all, I know that when I add all of these probabilities together, that's 0 0.32, 0 0.20, plus 5x, plus x, that has all got to equal 1. So these bits, that's 0.52, plus 6x equals 1. If I do 1 minus 0.52, and I could do that on my calculator, I get 0.48. So I'll just do 0.48, I'll just divide that by 6, and we'll see what the probability of x is going to be. So 0.48 divided by 6, that's going to be 0.08. Great, so if I want to, I can actually just go back to the table now and say this is 0.08, and if I multiply 0.08 by 5, I get 0.4 here. It just wants us to work out the number of yellow counters in the bag, and it says that there are 300 counters in the bag. So the number of yellow will be the probability of yellow, which is 0 0.08, and we're going to multiply that by 300, and that will just tell us how many yellows there are going to be. So 0 0.08 times 300, and we get that there are 24 yellow counters in this bag. Let's double check we've got this one. Yep, there's the answer, 24, and if you want to, you can always have a look at the marks team that's here. 
okay we've got another one for probabilities from tables so same old stuff it says at the beginning it then says the probability of taking a green counter is 0.2 more than the probability of taking a pink counter so if pink was x then green would be x plus 0.2 it's 0.2 more than pink so adding all these probabilities together you've got your 0.05 your 0.15 we have an x plus 0.2 for the green and we have an x for pink and that all needs to add up to one so adding these bits together these add to 0 0.2 and another 0 0.2 is 0 0.4 and there's two x's so it's 2x plus 0 0.4 equals 1 again you could have done those bits on the calculator if you needed to so 2x was 0 0.6 which means that x is 0 0.3 so if i fill in the table that's going to be 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 is 0.5 and we can check that it all adds up because these add up to 0.2 that would make 0.7 yeah there we go they add up to one it says that there are 18 blue counters in the bag work out the total number so if i say that the total number like i have been doing before is saying that it's y i would say that uh, the blue probability multiplied by the total number is equal to 18 so the total number this time would be 18 divided by 0.15 and I'll put that straight on my calculator. So we'll do 18 divided by 0 0.15, and we get that the total number of counters is 120. So we've completed the table with 0.5 and 0.3, and then 120. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and then 120. Great. Okay, this one, I'm just going to put it in with this topic, just because it kind of feels like it could fit in here. It's about relative frequency, which is basically about from doing experiments. And it says, when drawing pin is dropped, it can land on point down or point up. Lucy, Mel and Tom each dropped the drawing pin a number of times. The table shows the number of times it landed point down and it landed point up for each person. Rachel is going to drop the drawing pin once. Whose results will give the best estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up? Give a reason for your answer. So we want it to be the person who has done the most experiments or who's done the most trials. Tom isn't going to be good, definitely hasn't done very many. Then Lucy. So Mel is going to be the most because Mel, Mel is going to be the best because she has done the trials the most times. So the best estimate will be Mel. And the reason is she has done the most number of trials. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at what it says for part B. It says Stuart is going to drop the drawing pin twice. Use all the results in the table to work out an estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up first time and point down the second time. So I'm gonna use all of the results here. That means I'm gonna find out how many times it landed point down, how many times it landed point up, and then a total. So first of all, I'm going to find the total of all of the point downs. So that's 31, 53, and 16. 31, 53, all not multiplying, adding those together, and 16, and that is 100. So it lands 100 times down. And then I'll do the 14, the 27, and the 9 to find out how many times it goes up. So it's 14, 27, and 9, and that is 50. So using this, the total of all of these things is 150. We want to use all the results to find it will land point up the first time and point down the second time. So I think point up will be 50 out of 150. That's for it landing point up, 50 out of 150. And means multiply. When we do point down the second time, it will be 100 out of 150. So I'm just going to put this on the calculator, multiply them together and see what we get. So that is 50 out of 150 multiplied by 100 out of 150 and we get the answer two ninths so we have the answer two ninths here let's double check these ones so we've got mel that she does the greatest number of throws or the greatest number of trials and we've got two ninths from these probability calculations that we've got here so next video is going to be all stuff to do with probability trees um, if you did find this useful please do like the video make sure that you subscribe to get rest of these videos coming out as well and wishing you the best of luck with all your studies